morning or afternoon or evening, whatever it is for you guys. Welcome to today's Q&A, this week's Q&A. Let's get right to it. So somebody asked me my thoughts on elimination diets to pinpoint sensitivities or gluten sensitivity in general. My thoughts on elimination diets, actually Kara Corey just posted a really, really awesome in-depth video on this topic, so I'm going to link that below. Make sure and go check it out. My thoughts on elimination diets. Really, I think that if you have a feeling that you have some type of allergy or sensitivity in general, one, I would highly recommend going to get it checked out and get tested so you can know for sure, rather than taking three, four, or more weeks to try these elimination diets and be somewhat sure about it, why not go get it tested and just be sure so that you can continue doing your normal things, eating the way that you want to with the knowledge of what you might need to avoid. Of course, if you have a severe allergy, you're going to know there's going to be severe health changes and health consequences to that. But I would recommend, yeah, go in and get it tested. As far as gluten sensitivity goes, typically the people that are allergic to gluten know. Like it's, they, they go into anaphylactic shock or they break out in hives or things like that. I think that gluten, gluten-free and, and things of that sort are pretty popular right now. I'm not 100% sure why. I think that a lot of people assume that they're gluten intolerant without knowing for sure. Again, I would just recommend going to get it tested. Elimination diets I know can take several weeks because you have to cut everything out and then you slowly introduce things back in. And again, Kara Corey talks more about this. She is a registered dietitian, so she has a wide knowledge of these things. Definitely go and check her video out. But as far as my thoughts on it, I've never had to do it myself. I don't have any allergies that I know of. As far as like intolerances, I don't have any. Where do you see yourself business and fitness wise five years from now? This question is so awesome. I've, I've been thinking on it since I read it. I honestly have no idea you guys. Five years ago I was, see five years ago was 2012. I was still struggling I believe with binge eating. I was just getting into lifting. I never would have thought that I would compete in bodybuilding. Never would have thought I would be vegan. Never would have thought that Matt and I were planning to sell everything and live out of an RV slash trailer. Never would I have thought that I would be able to work for myself. <laughs> so it just, it kind of reminds me of the possibilities for the next five years. How I have no idea what's in store or what will be happening in five years. I can sit and try and make a plan, but I honestly don't want to because... I kind of want to just roll with the punches and take things as, as they happen and take life for what it is each day. If I were to think of something, I don't know, let's say I had to make a plan. I don't, I don't necessarily want to, but let's say I had to make a plan. I hope to still be doing YouTube videos. I don't know what YouTube will be like in another five years, uh, but I hope to still be sharing my life and our life on, on the road and our travels. I don't know if we'll still be traveling, but I would still, I would like to still be traveling in some way. I still want to be coaching, but I want to incorporate more of a lifestyle aspect to it. So possibly some type of intuitive eating, counseling, as well as fitness and health and, and mindset and lifestyle coaching. I still want to be doing that. I want to have several eBooks out, uh, to offer another form of encouragement and teaching to people that might necessarily not benefit from coaching. As far as life with Matt, I, I, <laughs> I just want to be enjoying everything with him. I don't know if, if we'll have more animals. I don't know if we'll have child babies. <laughs> I don't know. I really, I can't, I can't say. I think it's a, it's in a good way because there have been so many changes in the last five years that I just have no idea what to expect. I think that as goals come up for myself, I'm going to make them happen. I have no doubt that I'm going to make them happen because everything that I've set for myself in the last five years, I've been able to accomplish and I've, I've been amazed at what we are capable of and what Matt and I have been capable of together. I'm excited. I'm really excited for the next five years. I'm sorry I don't have a more definitive answer, but it's, it's all positive. I just have such a positive outlook for the next five years, but I don't want to sit and, and say this is going to happen because I have no idea. And I think that what we are going to do in the next five years is more amazing than I can even fathom at this moment. How do you suggest is the best way to lose weight if you have a knee injury and shin splints? So I'm going to tell you guys right now, I am not um, knowledgeable enough on injuries to help you rehab those. I'm not 
um, certified in any type of rehabilitation, one, go to physical therapy. A physical therapist will tell you specifically how to rehab these injuries. If you're not already, I don't know for sure. You'll learn how to specifically rehab these muscles and, and repair your body. And of course they can give you limitations on any exercises for the future because I don't know if you could still do some upper body stuff. Why not do some upper body type of exercises, um, especially things that are seated. You know, you could still work on bench and shoulders and back. There's lots of things that you can still work on in that sense. Again, I don't know for sure. As far as um, losing weight, which I'm assuming you mean losing body fat, not necessarily just weight in general, but mostly whenever people say they want to lose weight, they want to lose body fat. So I would recommend, say if you're, if you have some type of injury and, and you can't necessarily work out at all, what I would recommend going about for people that are injured is to just focus on fueling your body as best as possible. So this time your body is going to be under a lot of stress. It needs a lot of vitamins, it needs a lot of nutrients to help repair whatever is injured. Like right now I need to focus on my nutrition because my body is, it's, I'm injured. Um, so I'm trying to get in as many whole macro and micronutrient dense sources as possible to help my body repair that much more quickly. Kind of like whenever you're sick, your energy and, and everything in your body is going towards fighting the infection. Your body is trying to repair right now. So uh, I would recommend going about that as optimally as possible. But if you want to continue to lose body fat, it's a tricky situation because you're going to risk losing muscle if you're not using your muscles. If you're going to be focusing on a caloric deficit, usually I recommend that through intake and exercise. So strength training and cardio. And you want to focus more on strength training than cardio. But again, if you can't work out, you're going to have to focus only on a caloric deficit. You might lose some muscle, um, the, depending on how long you're resting and how long you stay in a deficit. Just staying on top of your nutrition, tracking your macronutrients, making sure you're at a good level to continue losing body fat, and taking measurements. So rather than just focusing on the scale, if you can get an in-body done, if you can get your body fat tested every six weeks or so, that would be very beneficial because it'll also show you where your muscle is at at this time. Taking measurements, circumference measurements. So waist measurement, chest measurement, thigh measurement, arm measurements, that's going to help you as well alongside the scale. So you want to have as many means of measurement as possible so you can take those all together because you might not see the scale moving, but you might see your waist size changing. And that's what I do with my clients. I have them do their waist and their weight measurements because the scale is not always going to show you the, the bigger picture and everything that's happening. So one, I would recommend getting to a physical therapist, getting it checked out, having a specialist, a professional look at your injuries and tell you what you can and cannot do from there. Exercise as much as you can to help your body um, retain muscle or possibly even build muscle in the upper body during this time. Do, do as much as you can while still being safe. This can help optimize your results. And then three, staying on top of your nutrition, so tracking your intake, remaining in a caloric deficit if it's possible for you at this time. There's a lot of different factors, but that's my general recommendations for that.